hello, hello, everyone. It's me, Gabrielle, from A Step Ahead Tutoring Services. Welcome to a brand new episode of Hot Topics. If you are not already familiar with us, we've been at the game for a while, but you know, if, if you're a newbie, if you're not already familiar with us, let me tell you what we're about. So this is a web series where we talk real talk about things in our purview. Uh, we are still a tutoring company after all. So we like to talk about education, employment, mental health, physical health, social services, entrepreneurship, all that good stuff. Anything that will promote other people and will highlight very important issues, that's what we're all about. We're all about bringing those um, bringing certain issues uh, or hot button issues or those issues that we don't really talk about, uh, we like to bring them to the forefront. And today I have a repeat guest. This is so awesome. Her name is Debbie Salima, and she is going to talk about sound therapy, right? We're going to delve into sound therapy, what it is, how it's done. This is something I'm not very familiar with. So it is awesome to bring this to the forefront and to educate you guys about that. So in case you forgot who she is, I'm going to remind you a little bit about her. So let me tell you a little bit about Debbie Salima. So, or AKA Debbie Linden, excuse me. Debbie Linden is the founder and owner of Peaceful Vibes. Peaceful Vibes is an online or in-person sound healing program where you can relax, recharge, and come into balance. Debbie started Peaceful Vibes earlier this year after retiring from teaching, which we talked about in the previous episode. She has always been into holistic and alternative wellness for over 20 years. She is also a Reiki master besides doing sound healing. Besides her business, Debbie loves to read and spend time with her partner, her three cats, and her family. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to bring Debbie to the stage right now. Hi, Debbie. How are Hi. you today? How are you doing today? Uh, doing good. Thanks for having me back. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So today we are going to talk about sound therapy. So you right. told me about this and I got very interested. <laughs> um, so I wanted to learn more about it and I wanted the public to learn more about it. So I'm going to pass the baton to you. If So if you can tell us about sound therapy. Oh, sound healing? Um, yeah, it's great to be back. Um, sound healing. Sound healing is an alternative form of uh, wellness. It's um, People may know it as sound baths, sound sessions, um, things of that nature. Sound meditation, I think, is another one they use. And um, it's, it's a very good thing. It's been around for like centuries for centuries i mean it started with um if you go back the um the shamans the shamans actually do it they use drums and rattles and um and the buddhist monks do chanting and everything and what it is is that um well i'm gonna tell you first of what it isn't because it's like a legal thing i have to do okay at this time uh, we have to tell everybody that sound healing is not a cure-all thing. It's not like you go to three or four sessions and voila, you're all cured. Um, what it does, though, is is that it supports your body, and it um, comes in by listening to the different sounds and the different tempos and everything that it um, balances your body mentally and physically, so your body can help along with the traditional medicines to help heal itself. So um, sound healing is, is basically just listening and relaxing and lying down to listen to different sounds, chants, um, things of that nature. So a lot of people ask me, uh, 
how this kind of works. And it's basically, um, I'm going to give you a short version of it, which would be, you know, like you want to clean your house and you can't stand cleaning your house. Everybody just like, eh, clean the house. So what do you do? You put on some very upbeat, fast paced music, get your adrenaline jumping. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're jumping around the house, cleaning your house. So for sound healing, it's all different sounds of different instruments and sometimes chanting or singing that will cause your body to um, react in different ways. So um, another way to explain how it works on your body is, ooh, like I'll do, I'll do my little teacher thing of um, when you're in school, you learn about atoms and you learn about all the atoms and they vibrate. So if you vibrate everything, then you take it a step further, which is your body is made of cells, cells made of atoms, atoms vibrate. So therefore we vibrate. And by using sound, it, it kind of, um, the vibrations of the sound will start to go in sync with the vibrations of your body. And it will therefore bring it into a balance. That's what they do. And there's been lots and lots of studies on this. Um, let me see. The uh, National Institute of Health actually had a meeting in March of this year to do a study on, on how sound healing helps with, uh, let me see, music. Let me see what I have here. Music intervention that can affect health. It has been, other studies have been done on this. So, um, and, and sound has actually been even being used right now in the medical field, okay? Um, for example, sonograms is sonar. Sonar is sound waves. So when you're actually going for a sonogram, it's sound waves that are going into the body or through the body at a different pitch, and it bounces off and comes back. So using that by the different sounds and the different tones will bring your body into a state of balance. So that's um, like a long and short version of it. <laughs> it's been proven to um, relax your body and for stress, it's a great stress release and it brings your body down into a relaxed state. So therefore uh, you get better sleep and less fatigue. It is also, um, depression. They've also done studies with depression. And if there's anybody out there that has um, know, some type of like piano or little thing, um, if you actually hit the letter, um, the note C and the note G, now it's dun, 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 dun. And you keep going back and forth for about 10 minutes. It's been proven that the two sounds going back and forth will uh, elevate your levels of serotonin and everything and will definitely um, improve your mood. So you can you know, come out of your little funk and feel so much better. And it's really, really good to do. So um, they've also done for pain too. They've also have uh, sound healing for pain where they've done a study in uh, England where they um, they did sound healing and they've noticed that because pain is with your nerves and we listen with our ears, which goes through our nerves, so everything's all interconnected. So when you listen to the sounds, those pitch and the vibration of the sound that certain with hearing is a lot faster than the pain sound for pain or the stimulus for pain. And they found in studies that um, by having sound therapy, it slows the path of pain where pain becomes more manageable. It won't get rid of the pain, but it will definitely um, definitely bring it down and pitch and everything. So that's uh, different things like that. They've done studies where um, uh, whether or not, because I said it's it's online or in person. So there was another study done where they had people 
in a live session and then a person, a group that did an online session. And they both found that they're both beneficial. You just get a different form of um, reaction to it. But either way, it's uh, a great, great thing. So that's an overview of sound healing, of what it can do. Um, how I started to get into it was about two, three years ago. I mean, I've heard of it through the years because of listening, you know, doing Reiki and everything else. And a friend of mine found somebody that did a group sound healing session and asked if I wanted to go. So never been to one. I've heard about them. So I went and I got relaxed. I had a pain in my lower back that kind of disappeared. Um, felt so much better, a lot of clarity. So I was highly, highly impressed with it. And then about a month or two later, the same person held another group sound healing. And this time I brought my partner and he was complaining that his back was hurting him. So he went, when he got finished, his back felt a hundred percent better. And we started talking to the the person that did it and he said well I'm going to do some uh, classes on it would you be interested so I took a couple of his classes highly informative and uh, started my business and actually now I'm actually going for a certificate in um, sound healing so I've already completed like one course I've already signed up for a second one so between the research and everything it's just absolutely um, amazing so that's uh, long and short of, of sound healing. Um, there's a lot of people they, uh, that do it, and they also have, um, what would I say, a lot of people ask me, like, what exactly, like, instruments do you use? And a lot of people, like I said, they use singing or chanting or such. Um not a singer or a chanter. So you're not going to hear me doing any of that stuff when you come to one of my sessions. Uh, what I use is um, Tibetan singing bowls, the uh, little brass singing bowls, which unfortunately I'm not at home. So I can't, I did not bring anything because I was hoping I'd be back in my room, you know, in my studio by then. But um, Tibetan singing bowls, which are absolutely great they um they've been used for, for sound therapy for hundreds of years the monks have done them then there's different pitches and different things that you can do with them um i have gongs a lot of people use gongs a lot of people also do um just straight gong baths um so you can do gong baths you could do drums you could do rattles um new thing that I was actually going to go into was uh, tuning forks because the pitch and everything and because it vibrates if you can put it on pressure points and the vibrations is almost like a like a massage you know I would equate it to where your um, muscles can relax and um, you can do that with singing bowls too you can actually take the singing bowl and put it on a particular area of the body and hit it and the vibration of the bowl will be felt in your body um my partner had hurt his foot and he was going for therapy and all this such and he just it wasn't really helping him per se so i took one of the singing bowls and put it on his foot and started playing it and within 10 minutes or so he said his foot felt so much better from it so it's um like i said unfortunately the Western medicine isn't um, picking up on it, but they will catch up. You know, so that's one of the things about sound healing. Um, people kind of ask to what, what to expect in a sound healing session. So I can go through that if you'd like. Sure, I sure. Yeah. But I don't know if you have any questions or not right now. I, I mean, I'm just rambling on. <laughs> rambling is good. Rambling is good. Um, so, so as you were talking, a couple of things came to my mind, like, mm -hmm. um, um, like 
when I go to uh, a spa or a massage parlor or even like a nail salon, they tend to play um, like calming music um, to like like to relax people as they right. um, as they get their massages or their nails done or so. so um, is is that along the lines of of what you're thinking of? It is, but then also what um, what it is is that sometimes um, it's you can hear better. Let me think how I can put this. If you had a live sound healing session, you can hear much better. And sometimes if it's done correctly, um, you can person who's doing the sound healing can walk around with um, their instruments like a bowl or a chime or something and they can come up to you and put it near you. And sometimes if it's close enough to your body, you can feel the vibration of it. Um, when you do it on line, like I do, I have a whole sound system and everything where if you put headphones on, you'd hear it better. The relaxing music, yeah, it's along the same lines, but it's not as intense as I would say if you actually had it either yeah, online or in person. Does that help you? Does that answer? Does that help a little? Or yeah, yeah. So it's you know, it's it's more, it's it's more intimate. So it's not like you're yeah. listening to a radio or something like that. It's actual. Right. Uh, the vibrations from uh, the the striking of instruments and right. it's going and you're putting that close to your body. It, it's going into right going like when into I went your to, skin and yeah right. Like when I went to the very first, well, when I did a couple of the ones as I was a participant and not the person doing it, um, the guy who did it had this huge gong. It was absolutely gorgeous, and every time he hit it my whole body shook. It was like, he wasn't even near me. I was like on the other side of the room and he hit it and the whole, it's like, you could just feel the vibrations. So it's a little different. Yeah. It's a lot different, I guess. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So then let's jump into it. So how does it work? So I, um, I, um, you know, I'm, feeling depressed I'm sad well it's two different things so I'm feeling sad and I I go to you for sound healing so what what would you do okay um first thing I would do is well there would be a few things I'd ask you first to wear comfy clothing um if it was just like a one-on-one -on -one, um, I would have a massage table usually set up or, you know, if you want to lay on the floor, it's fine too. I'd have a yoga mat or you could bring a yoga mat, um, pillow, blanket, such like that. And you would just lay down. I mean, it's not like a massage where you have to strip down. I mean, you just get nice and comfy with, you know, fully clothed. Um, a light blanket because you're going to be there for about a half an hour, 45 minutes, even though you're relaxing, you know, when it, your, your temperature will start to drop a little. So nice blanket would be good. And, um, usually when you come in, you could tell me, yeah, I feel out of sorts or you know, have a headache or something. And, um, I would ask you also, uh, if there's any sounds that bother you, because I had somebody that said um, the high pitch sounds would give her a headache. So I stayed away from all the high sounding um, bowls or chimes or anything else that I had. So um, you would get comfy and, you know, you could lay on your side, you can lay, well, not on, on your back, side, you know, it, it's not like, a massage where you have to stay still for an hour and you go, oh my God, you know, I'm getting a cramp in my leg type of thing. I mean, you could, you could shift your weight or something. And um, I just start, start in with the sounds and sometimes um, sounds could still bother you. I mean, you could say, yeah, high pitch sounds, you know, kind of unnerve me or something. 
and I could start with something. And there's times where a certain sound just for that day could bother you. And um, I would say, just if the sound starts bothering you, um, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's just, I'm going to pick a body part, like your lower back, all right? And the sound of a pitch or something could start to, you could start feeling the pain in your, a you know, little discomfort in your lower back. Um, usually we just say, you know, make a note of it and just let it go. Cause sometimes, you know, it, you hit that spot and then all of a sudden you'll just feel your body kind of go, Oh, okay. That's what I needed. I'm going to relax now. But if it bothered you, I would tell you, you know, put your finger up or your hand or something. So I know like, Ooh, that's kind of, that's an ouch area for you. And I would do that for oh, half an hour. You know, it depends on how long of a session you'd want. And uh, when you go through it and then afterwards, oh, sorry. Even before I would start, I would ask you to do like a body scan. So I would say, okay, start at your head. See, you know, how do you feel with your head? Let's just go down. You don't have to tell me anything. Just make like a mental note. Like, you know, your shoulders hurt, arms, you know, how do you feel? And then I would do a sound treatment for as long as you want. And then when I'm finished, I would turn around and say, okay, let's do the scan again when you're ready. Go through your body again and see like anything different. You know, like maybe your neck was bothering you and now, wow, you know, it's like all mushy, <laughs> you know. And, and that's basically how the session would go. Okay. <clears throat> I'm still a little confused, though. Um, okay. So are you, so I guess if there's like the lower back, for example, I guess, what exactly are you doing? I guess I'm not really grasping that. Are you hitting the back with an object? Are you hitting like two things close to the back, making a sound. I, I guess I'm not really clear about well, what exactly you're doing. Right. It would depend on you. I mean, if um, some people just don't want to be touched, which is okay. Um, I can put the, let's, I can take a bowl and put it next to you, close to, let's say you're lying on your, let's just say you're lying on your back and you're comfy. I can put the bowl next to the side of your body and hit it. And, and the vibration just from the sound and the closeness of the bowl could vibrate and cause um, your body to, to respond to that sound. Um, if you would, you know, if you feel more comfortable, yeah, I could put a bowl on your back. Um, I, it was a family member that had uh, back pain and I put a bowl on her back and started hitting it. And she said it felt really, really good from the vibration. So it depends on, on your comfort level, if you would like to have a bowl on there or um, for starters, you know, it could be also the fact that you just lay there and by listening to different sounds, um, that could also the, the pitch and the, and the pitch of the sound and everything could also um, you have your body respond that way. Okay. So ideally you would want, like using your example, ideally you would want the bowl on the person so you can hit it. So if like, cause if someone didn't want to be touched, for example, then they would just listen to the sound of you hitting the bowl. Um, right. But I, which is less ideal, which is, I guess, what I'm getting, but it's more ideal for the bowl to be on the person and you hitting the bowl. Is that right? It, it's, it depends. I've, I've seen two schools of thought on this. Um, I have seen two schools of thought on this. There is um, some where they put the bowls around you, like just all around your body and just hit it. Um, I've seen another school of thought where you can put a bowl on the person and, and hit it if you want. Um, 
I've actually seen it's it's a really cool thing. It's a, a bowl and it has a long, it looks, the only way I can equate it to would be like a wine glass, but without the bottom. And you hold it and you can put that on the person and then strike the bowl and it goes down. Same thing with tuning forks, the same thing. So it it's more of a preference. I would go more of a preference of the person than me. Oh, okay. You know, like if you don't mind having, let's say, the, let's just do the back pain again. If you don't have a problem of a bowl, you know, with my, like, put the bowl on your back, put my hand in to hold it so it won't move and hit it a few times. If you're fine with that, again, you don't, you know, fully clothed. I mean, there's no, you know, um, then fine. If you're like, mm, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah, that's okay too. Then just lay there and listen to to everything. You know, I would go. I usually go with whatever the person feels more comfortable with. Okay. So another thing uh, that kind of came to my mind as you were talking. So if you're listening to the sounds around you, so is it like meditation in a way? Like, are they? Is it um, like a mental escapism when as they're listening to the different sounds? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's another thing people ask is like, what what should I expect? I mean, it's cool. I lay down. I listen to you, know, you bang some bowls or whatever. You know, that's great. Um, yeah, you can um, you can actually <laughs> your body can relax so much you could fall asleep, which is what I did during one of the sessions. I literally was like almost out and <laughs> caught myself starting to snore. Um, I've seen people actually go out to sleep on it. Um, you can go into uh, a dreamlike state, I would call it. Um, it can also, certain sounds can also uh, bring up memories for you. Um, I have something which is called uh, an ocean drum and I, it's a drum, it's a round drum on both sides. And inside the, the drum is uh, beads, like little ball bearing beads or something. And if you move it at nice and slow, it gives the sound of the ocean. And I did that uh, for one session and some bells. And the person said, oh, it reminded me of the beach and I love walking along the beach. So she, went to her happy spot, which was the beach at that point. So you can also have those things. Um, I went to one where it was the guy that I started taking classes from where he took a mallet and he hit the gong in such a way that it sounded like a space alien ship, you know, those space movies and everything. And I was like, whoa, that's that's kind of weird, you know. And all of a sudden now you're thinking of space aliens and, <laughs> you know, things of that. Oh, okay. So who, I guess you can, you could speak from your own experience, but who are, what's the typical client that comes to you for, for sound healing? Like what's. Um, what are the typical ailments? What are, what's the typical age range, gender? What's the typical client that you tend to see? Um, right now, it's mostly women. Um, even when I had gone as a participant, it was mostly women. Um, I don't know why men don't. I mean, it helps them too. Um, let me see. All different ages. Um, yeah, all different ages. So it's not, you know, anything like that. The typical response that I get, because I have one that always comes, uh, is stress. Totally stressed out and um, just needs to unwind is usually the, the most common. Yeah, is usually the most common one I get is that I'm just totally stressed and I can't sleep and I just need to spend 35 an hour, 35 minutes to an hour of uh, just total listening. 
Hmm. Interesting. So yeah. basically, um, sound healing is a combination of the the vibrations that your body feels from like two objects striking each other, uh, whether it's on your body or close to your body. So it's the actual vibration that you're feeling, and it's also the 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 different melodies and and pitches that you're um, that you're listening to. Is that's is that basically what it comes down to? It does. Um, it does. It's also a combination of the uh, the pitches. They have the um, the binaural beats, um, which I just started to get into with that one because it's um, a lot of people do that right now are those binaural beats. And basically what binaural beats are is the same pitch, but on different, like a low pitch note and a high pitch note of the same, um, let's say, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so. So I'm going to do um, the low do to the high do. Okay. So they're both the same do, but one's a no, do and one's a. Do. And when you put them together, it vibrates and it makes that sound. And that's been working. And people have been doing studies on that and brain waves because um, there's been a lot of studies that when you have these vibrations and sounds, that it releases endorphins and serotonins and other things like that. So that's one way of helping. Um, it's that, uh, yeah, that would be one basic avenue. All right. So what, what got you into this type of business? Why, why do sound healing at all? Why do sound healing? Um, I, you know, I was just drawn to it. it. It, like I said, I just went to the first one and I was like, wow, this is really interesting. Um, I've always liked music. I, my family was a musical family. So, um, I studied music a little bit. So when I did this, it was like, wow. And then I got drawn, you know, you get drawn to things. I got drawn to the, um, the singing bowls and just, ah, I just was more, it started out, I think is, wow, this is interesting now that I've experienced it. And, um, let me just learn about it. And all of a sudden it was just like, wow, this is like amazing stuff. So, you know, that was basically it. It's almost like the Reiki thing. It was like, wow, this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So what do you think sound healing has that maybe other type of other types of healing don't like what, do you think it's the pros and cons of sound healing as opposed to like getting a massage or meditation or any of the other treatments that are out there? Well, a lot of people use, um, like when I went through the uh, original sound healing courses, uh, there were people that actually teamed up with massage therapists so as the people were getting the massage on top of that, they were getting also the, um, the bowls and the, and the chimes and everything on that. It was like an add on. Um, I personally think it's not like a standalone thing. Um, I think that, your whole body works together and everything's in balance. Nature's in balance. We're in balance. And um, I think it's a, another piece to help your body be in balance along with a healthy diet and exercise. And um, maybe, you know, I would even go as far as, I mean, I'm not blowing off Western medicine at all. I mean, you know, I do go to the doctor and have all that stuff too. So don't get me wrong on that. But I think if it went with them um, in conjunction with it, so it's all 
one big thing and not just, Hey, take a pill and, you know, call me back in two weeks. Um, it would work. I think it would definitely work. I mean, there's been studies that say it works and they're studying all different, you know, moods. And, um, I read somewhere, but I, a study was done. I don't really take it where supposedly they helped with, um, diseases and such, which is what they are working at now because of different frequencies, because actually the Western medicine is using sound. Like if you have a kidney stone or something, they use, and I can't remember the name of it, um, where they use bursts of sound to break up the kidney stone. So it's really not like, it's not, um, I'm gonna say quackery. I don't know why it's coming to my head, but it, it's not anything that it can't work together. I don't think there's any cons to it, honestly. I mean, it's not gonna hurt you. It's not like you're gonna get a violent reaction, God forbid, you know, if you took a medicine or something. It's just. Okay. So, I mean, it's, I could, it, so it hasn't been tested for diseases like um someone with like aids or cancer or diabetes anything like 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 those of diseases um i i have looked at research <coughs> excuse me but um it, the stuff that i see is uh, I guess I don't know how to word this. Let me thank you for a second. There has been research because I do go on and look. In fact, today I even went to look to see any more updated stuff. But when I do go to look, I would not be, um, if you brought it to the, the medical community per se, they would probably laugh at it because it's not from the NIH or something. The NIH, though, the National Institute of Health did do or is doing another study on it. Um, let me see, where's my other one here? Oh, poop. I'm not certain where I'm trying to look at because I wrote down some notes here. Yeah, there was one study that um, the British Academy of Sound Therapy, because they do have academies, did in 2017, which I had explained about the live session and the Zoom session. Um, NIH did one in 20, 2012 or something. And, you know, so they're now redoing it and they're doing it in all different fields. They're going to have um, sound therapists come in uh, working with neurosurgeons and other doctors. So hopefully it'll keep going, you know, because now they're doing it. I mean, if you, years ago, um, when people said, hey, I'm a vegetarian and, you know, it's good for you, um, the medical community used to laugh because, and then they did their own study and went, wow, yeah, you know, you were right like 30 years ago. So it's they just have to catch up <laughs> okay so there's still more research that needs to be done but i would imagine right. um <clears throat> i would imagine it's more of like uh, like a supportive treatment so you mm. know for um for diseases like um like cancer for example it might be excuse me <clears throat> And I'm just kind of spitballing, but it might mm. be more, the sound therapy might be more like supportive in terms of like, like calming your mind and slowing the body down. So the natural processes of your body can, mm -hmm. uh, can work to heal you. So I imagine it's more like support as more direct. So Right. I did, right. I did see something about um, doing sound healing with hospice at the end of life that um, it made them much calmer. You know, it, it made them deal with the pain better along with hospice care. 
I did see a study on that. I've seen studies on children. Um, I can't remember now. It was behavioral because I saw a bunch, so I don't want to get them confused. But I know they've done studies with children and sound healing and and things of that. Um, there are, I believe, some hospitals now that are um, putting sound healing in. And in fact, the college that is where I live near um, has a group of um, counselors and such that if the children, if the students, I should say, if the students have uh, need to talk to somebody and things, and one of the people on that board um, is a sound healer, actually. So this, um, it, it is making its way into the mainstream. And I was actually surprised. Um, my partner found it at the college. He said, oh, look, they have a sound healer on the college along with um, a counselor and social worker. And, and I was shocked. So I know it's going into the mainstream for support. I just don't know how fast it's going. Mm. So what do you think is the holdup? What do you think is the delay to sound healing being accepted by the, the mainstream medical community? Uh, wow. <laughs> I think it's a holdup because um, it's something that the pharmaceuticals can't get a hold of. It's something um, where doctors, I, I think the tradition, the traditional Western medicine is um, just treat one area. You know, you have a headache, you just treat the headache, not the fact that you're in a stressful situation that's causing your headache. So you have to deal with, okay, what, you know, if you did it, um, differently, you would say, okay, you have this headache, let's do some sound healing to relax or meditation or, you know, your, your weapon of choice there. Um, and, and along with coping skills so that you don't get this, they, the doctors in Western medicine is basically, um, we treat this one area. We're not treating the whole cause of it. So they are, um, it, it's a drawback. However, the late Dr. Mitchell Gaynor, who was an oncologist, um, started with sound, he did sound healing. He um, had bowls in his office. And when people came in and were upset, um, he would have them actually sit with the bowl and they would sit for 15 minutes and, and just play with the bowl and it would calm them down enough. And he saw that there was a correlation between sound and calmness and, and helping your body heal. And there's another, oh, I can't remember her name now, but she wrote a book. She actually was also an oncologist out in, um, La Jolla, California, and she also started um, incorporating sound into her practice. And now she's actually um, started, she actually left California and is now in India and is doing more such um, work over there now with sound and chanting and things of that nature. It's just, you know, if they could, if the Western medicine doctors could just realize that it's not just, you know, your arm hurts, so you cut it off. It's like, let's see what the rest of the body's making. You know, there's got to be a cause why your arm is hurting. Fair point, fair point. <laughs> now, so tell me, like, why someone would go to a sound healing expert. Like, why can't I just grab a bowl and a spoon and, and start hitting it myself, you know, whenever I, um, I mean, I know it's difficult to reach my back, but like, oh, when I have a uh, foot pain, like, why can I just get a bowl and a spoon and put the bowl over my foot and start hitting it myself? Like, why? 
I mean, you'd why go to <laughs> why go to an expert? I mean, you could. I mean, um, <laughs> there are people that say that you know, like if you, um, the one course I took, the teacher said, you know, you could tell you, your clients that you know, C and A, if they could find two bowls, a C bowl and an A bowl, and you just hit it back and forth for five to ten minutes, will help them. Um, I'm I'm game for that. That's fine if, if you know if you want to invest in gongs and everything. I mean, people do. Um, it's more, huh? I guess after a while, you know, it's good to do that because it's like meditation, and then people go to meditation classes, or you know, you could stick in a go on YouTube and do yoga, but it's fun also doing a whole yoga class. Um, it's more, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could, but if you hit the wrong sounds, you could probably, uh, do more harm than, than good, you know. Um, I think after a while, too, you would just say, hey, you know, this is great, but I really don't feel like, you know, twisting like a pretzel to put a, a bowl on my back, <laughs> you know. So, uh, I mean, you could give yourself a massage, too, and and that, but you would rather, I don't know, I, I feel like you would definitely want to go to somebody that would have a little more experience than just grabbing a pot or a spoon and start hanging it on your back or your leg or something. Oh, very good. Very good point. Very good. Point. All right. So to wind down. So do you have any final advice for people who maybe want to learn more about sound healing or are maybe they want to get into the business themselves or any any final words of advice that you want to do our viewers? Um I would say, you know, don't it's okay to think outside the box. It's okay to um, look at things. If there is a sound bath type thing or a sound session somewhere, I would suggest trying it first to see you know how you like it and everything. And then if you want to continue, um, there's some really good places where I would definitely you know take a course or two to make certain it's not really anything right now that is certifiable per se. Um, they are looking into it. I mean, you can go for certificate programs like I'm doing, but um, my thing would be just to try it out first before. And then if you really like it, talk to the person who did the uh, session and see what they, uh, how they trained and see, maybe you could help them. Because that's that's a really cool way too. When I took um, when I started out the, in the class, um, the teacher would come out with a bowl or a crystal bowl or whatever, explain it, show us how we did it, and um, we would try it on each other, and we would do it that way. So it's a lot of hands on, and, and if you really want to study and and do it, I would say see if you can team up with somebody if you really enjoy doing this. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm gonna put up your contact information right now. So, you guys, if you want to learn more about sound healing, or if you want to talk to Debbie about her services. Maybe you want to seek her services. Again, she is online and in person. Um, sorry, before I go on, you're in person. In person where? Where are you located? I'm in central New York. So right, it would be, right. Yeah, so it would be around central New York, uh, the Hudson Valley. I could travel because that's where my family is. So, oh, so you, you travel to clients who come to you. I could, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yes. so, okay. So or, not so, or online. <laughs> wait, sorry. So people can come to you, or you go to them? Um, I would probably go to them, or you know, or do classes. I have classes coming up that I do. Okay, so so you guys, you heard that Debbie makes in-home visits, and she also has online 
services as well. So if you would like to learn more about her services, her contact information is scrolling below. You could check her out online. Her website is peacefulvibes.vpweb.com. She is also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So definitely give her a follow and, and check her out. And this is definitely a very interesting conversation and a, an interesting, <laughs> you know, it doesn't hurt to think outside the box, try different things. You know, there's more than one way to heal a person. So uh, definitely, I'm not knocking Western medicine, but, you know, there are uh, proven results for more holistic healing. So um, if you are interested in learning more about it, trying it for yourself, you, you know, um, or you happen, you happen to be in the central New York, more upstate central New York area, you can definitely um, have her come to you. Or, you know, if you're more virtual, you can um, definitely reach out to her for virtual services. All right. So, Debbie, thank you so much for, for coming back. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Thank awesome. you. And let me put you backstage. And now it is you and me, guys. So we have reached the ending of our episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Please check out our YouTube channel for more videos and clips. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, let us know what you thought about this episode by leaving a comment below. We will definitely appreciate all of your feedback. And if you would love to learn more about A Step Ahead Tutoring Services, if you want to know about our services, our workshops, this web series, if you want to learn more about us, you can check us out online. Our website is, and I just remembered, I forgot to put up my little banner. Um, bam. If you want to learn more about us, you can go to our website www.astepaheadtutoringservices.com. We are also on various social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp, and Eventbrite. So definitely follow us. We definitely will appreciate the support there as well. And one last thing before I go... We are also financial contributions to our crowdfunding campaign on ifundwomen.com. Our unique link is scrolling below, so definitely check that out. And I'm going to play a small video that will explain more. Hey there, have you heard of us? We're a small team of tutors here at A Step Ahead Tutoring Services. We believe that education and information should be accessible to everyone, regardless of income, race, or creed. We're dedicated to making this happen, but we need your help. Please consider donating to our crowdfunding campaign. No amount is too small. Your donation will allow us tutors to remain employed, offer free and low-cost services, and reach out to families nationwide. With your help, we can tackle the academic challenges of our students and the emotional, mental, and behavioral changes that result from these challenges. As a bonus, we can improve our communities in the process. Support us today. We're a for-profit company, your donation may not be tax-deductible. Please consult a tax professional. And that's it for our episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Please tune in for the next episode. Thank you for coming. Signing off.